Here comes the second layer of planking. And wait till you see how fast we're gonna go. We are temporarily fastening them down. It's, uh, there's many reasons for that, and uh, it works out really well. It's much easier than the first layer, like I had said, and uh, it's really fun. We make sure that we have enough boards prepared so that we'll run out of glue. That way we don't waste a bunch of glue and it's not going off on us. So we mix it in a relatively small batch and then spread it out and nail them down. Pretty easy to do. They've already been fit. We're going to go over the fasteners and why we use them and all the different advantages of doing it and different things like that. We're trying to do it in a production fashion here. It's not like we're building a production boat. But the process itself from one end of the boat has to be addressed in some sort of production fashion because you can't run all over the place and you can see that my duty doesn't change too much as I go along. I'm just standing in one spot, you know, and that's the way it was designed. The process was designed, never mind, you know, the boat itself, but the movements really and the staging and all those kind of things have to tend to being able to do this quickly because uh, the glue is trying to go off and you're trying to beat it. So... You know, that's what we're doing. We're over here at the mixing table, and we're gonna mix 24 ounces of Total Boat High Performance, two to one epoxy. We're gonna pour in 16 ounces of resin, and we're gonna be careful we don't get much over the line there. And then we're gonna pour in another eight ounces of hardener. And uh, that's the right mix. 24 ounces is the right amount for us. We can put down quite a few planks in front of us and then we beat it up really aggressively and then we're gonna pour a little bit off into another container and we're gonna thin it. We're putting in about 10% alcohol in this mix right here. That's just an estimate, but you know, about 10% and you mix it up. You gotta mix it in quite a bit because it doesn't wanna first get going. But once it mixes, then uh, you know, you can test it pick up your stick and let it drip off the end of the stick and just kind of get an idea as to what it looks like as compared to what it looked like before you thinned it. And that is to paint the back side of the planking. And then what's left in our mixing container, we're gonna actually thicken and then we're gonna use that in front of us as we're laying the planking. And with the thickener, I'm kind of careful how much I put in there because, you know, I want to put some in and get it mixed up and then take a look at it and it's probably not going to be enough. I don't want to put too much because it'll get too thick, too quick, and I won't be able to use it properly. It'll be a struggle on the boat and everything else. And it does impede it from going off properly if you get too much in there. So, you know, I get it just about right. I'll test it a couple of times and make sure it's what I'm looking for and then off I go with it. Well, I'm back up standing on the boat here and we're coating out the back side of the planking that we're gonna put down. You know, I'm coating the end grain on the very end where it butts up to the keel and I'm coating the whole surface. But uh, I've stopped here for a second. I'm gonna dump out all my thickened glue onto the boat and spread it out so that it doesn't create heat in the cup. You know, because in the cup, if I leave it in there, it's gonna heat up and go off. When I spread it out like that, it keeps it nice and cool and I'm able to use it for quite some time. So we're just gonna spread that around a little tiny bit and go back to these planks. We're using the thinned epoxy on the back of these planks. And uh, it's pretty interesting because you put a coat on the whole plank and then you just kind of kick around a little tiny bit, maybe five minutes and look at them and you can see that it's soaked in in some spots and in other spots, not so much. It's kind of the nature of the wood itself. Some of it's a little bit more porous than others. So in places, we'll just kind of go back over it a little bit and make sure it's on the end grain where it's at the keel. That's pretty much it. We're not too concerned about getting it on the edges because it's a little bit too much work right now. And I don't have to do that. I can do that later when I'm laying the plank. So once we get all of that plank and coated out with the thinned epoxy, we're going to move into laying them down. Now, you know, I've got my reservoir of thickened epoxy in front of me and I'm spreading it on the edges of the plank that's in place. It's very easy and quick to do because I don't have to hold on to that plank. It's just laying there, it's so simple. And uh, you'll probably notice I haven't gone back to the container not once, which really makes it easy because otherwise you're just handling too many things. I've got one hand on my trowel and one hand on the wood and I just keep moving. This layer of planking that I'm putting down right now really is the core in a cord construction. You know, not only is it a core, it's also a structural element because it has strength and it has pliability. It's just got everything. Wood's got all kinds of different advantages and uh, on this boat, it's certainly an advantage. 
the trowel that I'm using is really dictating how much material I'm getting down there, you know, underneath the planking. I cut the teeth in the trowel myself with a razor knife because as you spread it, it starts wearing the teeth off the trowel on the fiberglass or even wood, anything in front of it because it's kind of soft. So, you know, once you do about 14 planks or maybe a little bit more, I'll just kind of recut the teeth in the trowel a little bit because you don't want to have too much glue down there and you don't want not enough and the trowel takes care of that. Right before I lay the plank, I make sure that I trowel the glue 90 degrees from the other plank. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I'm trying to make sure I get the right thickness without wiping the edge off that I just made sure I covered. What happens is you've got all those slots in the glue going 90 degrees. So when you put the piece down, you put it down up near the other piece first and then force it down and it kind of blows the air out from underneath it. We're getting near the end of the gluing right here. Now I'm going to crowd these planks right up tight against each other with the claw hammer and just hold them down with my hand and then take a pilot drill. This is a 3 30 seconds drill. It's under the size of the nail that I'm going to use. I'll drill a couple pilot holes and then you can see the nails that I use are duplex nails and I've got a nut and a washer on it because the head of the nail would go down through the washer without that nut. And the nut spreads the load out on top of the washer, and the washer spreads the load out on top of the wood, unlike a tapered screw head that might have a tendency to split the wood. These don't. They just hold it down nice and tight. And now you're getting a look at how I'm fastening them down right here. Now that I've got all the planks crowded right up against each other nice and tight, and the glue's coming up the seams already, I can drill every hole. So I just take my pilot drill and just blast off. Right now I'm drilling holes into the runner halfway between the chine and the keel and I'm staggering them back and forth on each side of that black line. You can see the line out in front of us there and I've marked them onto the boards when I fit the boards or when I pick them up one or the other and uh, make sure that I don't miss that runner. That was the point of that. Then we're going to do the same thing along the chine. We're going to drill two holes in each plank. So, you know, a bunch of pilot holes and then we can get nailed. Mm -hmm. Now you may never have seen anything quite like this, and I've really never done it exactly like this before, but you know, people have been using duplex nails for years to temporarily fasten things like forms and all kinds of different things, but uh, this is a little different. Temporarily fastening the nail uh, planks down has huge advantages because we can't split the planks. We've got a little pilot hole. It's quick and easy. You know, if I were drilling a hole for a screw, it would be quite a bit different. And they'd have to crawl up there to drive the screws, and they'd have glue all over everything, all over the tools, everything. This system was designed so that you could stay out of the glue and get it done quickly and have it do exactly what you want it to do, and that is to hold the planks down tight. There's nothing to it removing them all over again. I'll show you all about that stuff, but it's so fast nailing them down. The glue's drying. You know, everything about this plays uh, to our advantage right here. I can go back real quickly over the nails one time afterwards and give them one more hit, drive them down a little bit tighter. You can see the glue just squeezing out from underneath it. Now this system might look a little bit laborious, but it's really not. You know, it's very simple to do, and it's surprising how many fastenings you can put in that fast. This is saving me massive amounts of time, labor, and it's doing the job the way I want it done. It's spreading the load, pulling them back out, everything. I'll show you how to do all that stuff, and believe me, it takes up no time whatsoever. This is rapid. This is a rapid system to get done what we need to have done.
Well, now you know what it takes to get that second layer down over the fiberglass. It's, it's a little easier, actually, than putting the first layer down because you've got a pallet in front of you to put the glue on, so that works out pretty nice, and, uh, you know, it's coming along pretty nicely. Uh, you know, there's a few other things I wanted to show you right now because it's convenient, and I'm going to be talking about all kinds of different stuff later. How you take these nails out without bending them because we just want to reuse them and different things like that. It's not real important, but we've been able to get away with that and uh, different things like that. But here's something for you right here. Now, remember when I was cutting the bevels on the chine area on the ends of the sole planking and on the keel, and then I put the stringer in and cut the bevels on that. Well, all the time I did that, I never had the piece that I was using for a gauge straight across the boat like that. I had it on a little bit of an angle forward at the keel like that. And what happens is it makes the bottom of the boat a little bit rounded. If you put this piece straight across, you can see it. It's got like a rocker in it this way. See that? And yet if I put it down this way, it's straight. So the idea of that was to get great contact halfway between where we're nailing it. So it's over a little tiniest little bit of a radius in between there and in between there. And I believe that helps make the glue contact a lot better. And then I go around and bang on it with a hammer so that I make sure that it gets glue contact everywhere. That's been done with coal molding boats. I mean, when you coal mold, they hammer the, all the laminates after they staple them on to make sure they get contact. So we're doing that too. So this is a pretty neat little trick. I wanted to be very conservative and uh, have it be very close to straight, right straight across. And uh, one of the reasons was because that works out with trusses. And uh, the other thing is, is that uh, it makes the glue contact work out really nicely. So that's what we've done. A little bit different, just a little bit more information. I am up forward on the port side at this point, and uh, we're just finishing up this uh, Ashcroft planking up here, the second layer, uh, 3 8 inch cedar planking over top of the fiberglass and uh, this is the area right here where I said from here to here right in here I have to fit them on both ends that's the only place every place else was you know uh, push right up to there fit it hang over and cut it off well now I'm fitting these right from here I guess it was yeah in here from here to here I got two left to go like that so these are the trickiest ones to fit but there's nothing really hard about it you know you just have to trim it until it fits that's what you have to do so there's one down. What I'm going to do is pin that one right down. And then... So now we're going to take our next plank and we're going to fit that. I'm going to just show you how I'm going to do it up here. On the bench, these planks would fit against each other absolutely perfectly because they've been jointed and they're straight. But when you put them on the boat with this little curvature, for some reason, they don't fit exactly right. So you got like a little bit of a rock in here. It's barren in here, and you got a little space at the top. And if you pull it tight at the top, you get a space at the bottom. So I'm going to take a little bit out of this board. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to flip it right over right there. I'm not going to take it anywhere. And I'm going to use the boat as a shoulder board. And then I'm going to try it one more time. I'll probably have to try a couple of quick ones, but eh, it's still rocking a little bit. I'm going to have to take a little bit more out of it right in here. reasonable, but I'm going to do a little bit more. I want to make sure that it fits perfectly. I've got it fit up at the top already, and Caleb's going to hold that corner right down for me, Caleb, nice and tight. Oh yeah, it fits right up there nice. So. My next move here is to just take a pencil and mark it right here. I can't really trace it underneath. The angle's too sharp, so I'm just going to mark it on the top. 
like that. And I'm going to connect these two lines up. Now I'm making this first cut at 90 degrees, but it does need a little angle on it. So I just tip the saber saw over the edge of the plank and maybe just whip it off on a 15 degree angle or something like that along those lines. I just don't want to cut too much off of it. First test fit at the chine here, it needs to be a tiny bit shorter. So we'll just take it out, droop it over a nail here. just right. So now I'm just going to tack it down on both ends and uh, I'm tacking it on the forward or, or the after edge up forward and the forward edge down the bottom so that it will kind of twist it in place so I can fit the next one alongside of it and keep going. Well the process is a little different up forward. Maybe a little bit more challenging because as you fit the planks you have to nail each one down temporarily to fit the next one up against it. You can't just pack 10 of them against each other. They've got too much twist in them. So I'm going to nail them on the side of the board that wants to lift up and I'm going to use the same temporary fasteners but I'm not going to drive them all the way down. I don't have to hold the plank down perfectly tight. What I want it to be is low enough so that the next plank I fit up against it will lay up against it. I still have some holding power in that oak underneath it because later on I'm going to be using that same hole again to temporarily fasten the plank down when I glue it. It's hangover and cut off just like it was back aft but in reverse. It's fit up against the side plank and then hung over the stem and cut off. You know, because it doesn't have a rabbited stem, it's going to have a cap afterwards. So that's why we had to temporarily fasten each plank before we fastened it down and glued it. So this is a great time right here because all these planks have already been fit and uh, we know how well it's going to work out before we glue it down. We just got to glue it down and nail it down really nice and just make sure we do a nice neat job. The next thing for us to do is to putty all the holes, screw it all down, all kinds of different things we're going to show you. But uh, we're building up to putting our next layer of fiberglass on here. We're going to put two layers of fiberglass over the boat, the 1708 cloth. It's a little stiff around the corners. I'm going to show you some new tricks that you probably haven't seen before or maybe anybody else. You know, things I just kind of invented for this boat itself. And uh, we're going to get away with some of that stuff. And uh, it's just a ball. This is fun for me because I've anticipated doing this boat for years and years. I couldn't be having a better time than this. <laughs> 